uh, different archaeological stuff to, to try and, and look at the Bible. Like, uh, I guess you'd say more more scrutinyingly. And we looked at the – we just got done uh, looking at the creation, and we looked at science and, and different thing, different theories and whatnot, which I hope it didn't come across as this is the answer to all the problems, but rather something <coughs> to just get you going with thinking about it. Um, now we're going to take on to the next section uh, of – the Old Testament. Um, that would be the period after the Garden of Eden and before Abraham. So there's a lot of stuff that happens in there, um, a lot of stuff that uh, we need to look at. Um, the genealogies, this person, the son of that person, the how, how long people lived, the, um, the Tower of Babel, the flood, and tonight we're going to start off looking at um, just kind of dating when these things happened. Um, if you know anything about um, uh, Bible history, you know that traditionally the flood has been dated to about 4,000 B.C. or so, uh, sometimes a little bit before, sometimes a little bit after. Um, and it seems like Christians have about 50,000 different views as to when it happened and, uh, you know, dating every which way. And you've got everybody calling everybody else an idiot. <laughs> so we're just going to look more at the bare facts of it rather than getting caught up in that stuff. Um, so the question then becoming, if they happened, when did the flood in the Tower of Babel happen? Now, why I say if they happened is because there's some people who think that these stories didn't actually happen. So that's something that needs to be considered. Did they actually happen? Now, one of the things that's commonly said is that the Israelites took the stories from the ancient Near East and just kind of added their own touch onto them. Which, I mean, obviously is, is possible. I'm not trying to decide for you guys. But uh, we're going to look at some reasons why I don't think that was the case. Um, obviously, one of the first things being they didn't steal every story. See what I mean? There's only a few stories that were late. And then second off is that the stories are so different that it's hard to imagine what their purpose would have been in just taking a story that already existed. But still, we will, we will consider that and we'll... Plow ahead. So in order to know when did the flood happen, we kind of have to look at when did the Tower of Babel happen. Um, and we know that at the Tower of Babel that all people were living in one city. So let's look at you know how old cities are. The, the oldest city that has been continuously lived in is the city of Damascus. They believe that it um, had people living in it off and on uh, all the way back until 8000 B.C. Um, so some 10,000 years ago, maybe as far as up to 10,000 BC, we see um, we see uh, cities being built. So we know that Tower of Babel had to have been before that, because at the Tower of Babel, everybody lived in one city, and now we're finding cities here. I mean, that date back. So we know the Tower of Babel had to have been before 10,000 BC. Okay. So now, with that being in mind. Keep in mind that the Native Americans came to America sometime before 10,000 BC. Once again, it looks like maybe even before 12 or 20,000 BC, um, depending on, on on that. Now, once again, those those numbers aren't definite. They're always finding uh, more stuff and whatnot. So what we know is sometime for sure is sometime before 12,000 BC the Native Americans came uh, to the U.S. And uh, so so that's something to keep in mind. So the Tower of Babel would have had to have been before the Native Americans came here. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, <clears throat> because probably because according to the Bible, the reason why the Native Americans came here was because of the Tower of Babel. So that's something we have to think about. Um, most, if not all, people lived together until the Tower of Babel. I already said that. The Tower of Babel would account for the Stone Age, which, by some estimates, go back millions of years, all the way up in the in the Near East, all the way to 6,000 BC. So. Now, why, why I say that is because we know that people lived together, and then they were dispersed out, and they became what's called hunter-gatherers. Now, that's basically where they – well, well they, where they hunt for their food, and that's exactly what God said would happen when he was talking to Noah in Genesis chapter 9, which we looked at that before. They are no longer just simply meat eaters. They are actually now predators, um, and that's exactly what history shows us is that there were – people were hunter-gatherers. And um, so, okay, that takes us through the Stone Age. Now, the thing is, we have, you have to kind of tread carefully here because we don't know is the ultimate answer. The oldest civilizations they we we think are in Africa, 
or if we're from Africa, but we don't know if they quote unquote evolved there or if they migrated there. See what I mean? So there's a lot of ifs, ands, and buts. And what people don't understand is when you go that far back in history, it's very difficult to know things for certain. So we really can't say with absolute certainty what the Bible says happened didn't happen because we don't we don't know. <laughs> Even when you're dealing with archaeology, just because you don't have proof of something happening doesn't mean that it didn't happen. There's so many different holes and stuff in archaeology. People don't get that, but there really is. Um, as far as we can tell, what about Neanderthals? As far as we can tell, Neanderthals were actually people. I know people will tell you they were like somehow stupid people or monkey people. Um, there's actually no proof for that. Uh, what we do see is we see that the Neanderthals um, had religious practices. Uh, they buried their they buried their dead, for instance. Um, and we have nothing that shows that they were any less than people. Um, for whatever reason, yes, they had um, slightly different uh, genetics, and they had slightly different body makeup. They tended to be bulkier. Um, however, that doesn't mean that they were anything less than people, um, just that they were people. <laughs> so until we have more definite stuff there, we really can't be too certain with, with saying that they, that they were monkey people. And as far as that, to, the, to date, we have found people and we have found apes. We have yet to find a crossover that would account for people coming from apes. Um, and that's kind of something that's important. Even the remains that we have found that seem maybe possible that we evolved from them is, once again, so fragmented that we really can't be sure. There is room for, for, for error. And pointing to the fact that we have similarities in our genes doesn't prove anything either. We, we really have to do more research on that. So if people try and tell you that it's absolutely certain of this and that and the other thing, it isn't. It just isn't. There's just a lot of, a lot of leeway there. Um, <clears throat> Genesis 4, 20-22 talks about how people um, had worked with iron and stuff, but this was just after the, after um, Eden. Now, we know that iron work didn't, wasn't used in the Middle East until much, much later, much later, after the flood, after the Tower of Babel. So what would, a, what would account for them being able to use iron all the way back, you know, before the flood? Well, it seems likely that there was lost knowledge, that people used to know how to do things and they lost the knowledge and then they had to relearn the knowledge years and years down the road. Now that's not saying too much because that kind of thing has happened before where, where, where humanity has lost certain knowledge and not been able to get it back. Um, so that just shouldn't really deter us that much. Um, if chapter 4, verse 26, it talks about religion, how um, in the days of, of Seth's son, uh, people started seeking after God. Now, see, that that is actually historically based. As far as there are human remains, there is remains of religion. I know people think that the that religion was, was conjured up by some government to get the masses to whatever. That's nonsense. As far as history and archaeology show us, religion has always been married to people. Always. There's never a time in human history where religion isn't there, and that's exactly what the Bible says, too. So, uh, there's that. Was Israel trying to piece together their whole history from the dawn of creation? That is a very important question. When we're looking at the book of Genesis, it's important to remember that they were not interested in detailing every single moment of history. That's very, very obvious the more you read it, um, especially as you compare it to other ancient writings, too. Um, and... Uh, I honestly don't even think that the that the people who wrote Genesis or um, that the Israelites who read Genesis, um, I don't even think that they thought that there was a complete history. Um, it, they wrote things for a purpose, and is, Israel did this singular thing with their writings where history could benefit us and teach us. And that was something that was unique to Israel. And uh, so there's that. I do not think that they were trying to uh, piece together their whole history from the dawn of creation. I really don't think that that was a thing. Um, which we'll get to the genealogies and stuff. Just hold on with that. Uh, another question that I've asked before that was asked beautifully in the book The Bible Among um, the Myths, I believe is what it's called, by John Oswald, um, was he brought up any – we've already looked at it, so I really don't want to waste too much time there, but he really um, – contrasted and compared how the Bible is so unique and so different from the ancient writings of the day and how it is the only one to have spawned monotheism, one God. And 
all the things that were so unique, like for instance in the law, how you treated people was equated to how you treated God. That was something that was only in the Jews' writing. In the, in the other laws, it was basically just, you know, well, first off, the, the, other, the laws of the other areas around Israel, they didn't actually follow them. They were just writings. But then second off, um, they really didn't make the connection about in, uh, loving people is loving God. They never made that connection. The, the, the Israelite, the, the books of the law and the Bible are, are singular in that. They, they're the only people who did that. Why was it so different from other myths? Why, why did, why did the myths in the beginning of Genesis? Why were they so different? Why could, first off, why would they have made them different in the first place? Why wouldn't they have just adopted the myth if that's what they were doing? Second off, why were the myths so much more focused on morality when the other ones weren't? Like for instance, um, according to one flood account, uh, the gods brought the flood because people were a little bit too loud. And there's no there's no promise from God, from the gods either that oh no we won't defeat you or in the future we won't drown you again there's nothing like that yet in the Bible there is why why these these little differences that make it so much different <clears throat> if it was invented why did they include things such as for instance the faults of their fathers why wouldn't they have made their fathers ideal role models. Why would they have included their faults? That doesn't make sense. Especially as some some people believe that Israel that the Bible was written rather late, and Israel was just a, a warring tribe that was trying to in intrude in Canaan and take over the land. Well, if that's all that they were trying to do was take over land that wasn't theirs, why oh why? Thank you. Wouldn't they have given themselves more right to the land? Israel's ancestors didn't come from the land of Canaan. See, I mean, if they were trying to say, hey, we belong here, wouldn't they have invented a story about, hey, we did actually belong here, we were here before you? Why, why would they have included all the faults? And then there's the issue of why would Israel as a nation accept a lie that they themselves manufactured? And why would they follow that lie throughout the generations? Now, some people might say, well, hold on, Israel did actually um, fail to keep the law. All the more reason to believe why it was real, because there was a standard that they were failing from, and the prophets realized that. Rather than saying simply, there was no standard. See what I mean? That doesn't that doesn't fit. So if it was only written to give a Jewish spin on other stories, the other stories of the ancient Near East, where did they get the idea from, and why wasn't there more overlap with the other stories? That's a very important question. Now, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, the ancient Near East is the area uh, pretty much from the edge of Edgewood, <laughs> Edgewood, the edge of Egypt up the Mediterranean coast all the way to Turkey and then from Turkey down the Tigris and Euphrates through like there would be Iraq and Iran in there um, all the way to that sea that's over there uh, by the Zagros Mountains and all that. That would be the ancient Near East. Um, it's kind of – it's called the Fertile Crescent. It looks like a crescent. Um, so – so that takes us to the Tower of Babel. Now, some very interesting things, and I want to start with actually reading the story itself, um, and then we can build on it. Genesis chapter 11. Excuse me. Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9 says, Now the whole earth used, used the same language and the same words. It came about as they journeyed east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. <coughs> and they used brick for stone, and they used tar for mortar. They said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven, and let us make for ourselves a name, otherwise we will be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. The Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have the same language. And this is what they began to do. And now, and um, began to do. And now, nothing which they uh, purpose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the whole earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, not Babylon, Babel. Because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the whole earth. Okay, so let's just kind of take a few things here. We didn't even know that there was a Stone Age with people, you know, traveling all around the world. 
until relatively recently. And here we have the Bible actually saying, hey, this is what happened. So then you have people like Columbus and whatnot coming to America and finding these Native Americans and saying, hey, how do these people fit in? When the truth is, the answer was right there all along. We just overlooked it. <laughs> so there's a, okay. Well, I'll I'll try and I'll try and remember everything because there's, there's really a lot to go through here. Um, first off, uh, some people have said these uh, the Tower of Babel are the ziggurats. These, if you're familiar, unfamiliar with um, with the ancient Near East, I'll just kind of plop ahead here. Oh, right there. These are the ziggurats. I'm sure you've seen them in history books before. Um, this is not my picture. I just got it off, off online. I hope I'm not copyright infringing or anything. But uh, there's there's those. Now those are the ziggurats, and some people have said, "Oh, that is the Tower of that those those are the Tower of Babel because hey, it's over in that area where the Tower of Babel supposedly was." Well, here there's a few things. First off, the Tower of Babel was never finished. The ziggurats were. Second off, the Tower of Babel there was one of them. There was one tower, singular, of, of Babel. The ziggurats are all were all over the place. So we know that that can't be it. Third off, the ziggurats weren't built until the 2000s BC, and we already said that, said that the Tower of Babel had to have been before 10,000 BC. So it couldn't have been the same tower. So then that takes us to the next thing. I already saw all those things. There's many of them. They were all finished. They're not old enough. So then it takes us to the next thing. The Tower of Babel, ha or I should say the ziggurats, have a similar design to the pyramids of Egypt, Egypt and the Native American uh, pyramids, all of which were built after 3000 BC. Okay. Now I want you to re recognize how important this is. This is a ziggurat. This is a pyramid. I'm sorry, this is the Native American pyramid. That's in South America. And then here's the Egyptian pyramid. So we have three different cultures building pyramid-like objects that are like towers that go up into the heavens. Okay, now with that being said, these were all built after 3000, after the Tower of Babel would have had to have been built. And so there's no reason to assume that they are not based off of the Tower of Babel rather than assuming that the Tower of Babel is based off of them. It is possible, for instance, that after the Native Americans came to America... They, were, they had this story about this big tower that they were building, and so they built a big tower where they came here. That's possible, isn't it? Now, if you read, if you're familiar with modern history, you know that they'll say something like this. The Israelites saw the pyramids, they saw the ziggurats, and so they made up a story about a Tower of Babel. Well, that could go both ways. We don't know which one came first, the story or the ziggurat. We don't know. So to say for sure, yes, the Tower of Babel is a made-up story, it might not have been. How else do you account for people all having different languages spreading out? Why would they have spread out? Why would they have done that? There would have been more security in staying together, which they had more security in staying together in the Tower of Babel. God had to drive them away from each other in order to get them to go. I think that that's kind of a big point. So is it possible that three different cultures retained the story of a tower that they were building? Yes, that's possible. We shouldn't rush to the assumption that the story is not true. Simply because it's popular opinion. But, uh, but also it could be that he meant something else for them. And right. Take it different. You know. Right. Who knows what they were building? With what? The pyramids. Right, right. And that's what I'm saying. With all the different history and culture and whatnot, we shouldn't assume that the, the story of the Tower of Babel is made up. Always. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, uh, then we get to the issue of the Tower of Babel being Babylon. Now, I think that such an assumption is drastically overstated. Um, was it in the same area as Babylon? Yes, but that doesn't mean that Israel was saying that the Tower of Babel was Babylon, just saying that it was in the same area. First off, it says that the Tower of Babel was made with bricks, mud bricks. So the Tower of Babel would have been gone long before Babylon was built because mud, when it gets in the rain, you see what I'm saying here? Yeah. doesn't hold up. Not only that, but if you know anything about the Near East, it, it's, it's a floodplain. All the cities in there, they, they cultivated the water. That's how they that's how they had their plants. In fact, it started to get to be a problem because the water had too much salt in it. And so the water, uh, the soil top got what's called salinization. Okay, So that means that the plants were growing 
more and more terribly. And so the more that they used that cultivation process, the less they were actually able to yield the crops, which is actually probably one of the reasons why Abraham moved from there to Haran, which it's neither here nor there. That's not really important, but just kind of interesting. Um, and so with that being said, with all the flooding that was going on there, it's not beyond, uh, once again, reason that the flood waters would have destroyed the Tower of Babel anyways. See what I mean? So to try, are we trying to find the remains of a Tower of Babel? No. No, we're not. Are we likely to find the remains of a Tower of Babel? No, it would have had to be before 10,000 BC, and it was made out of mud. <laughs> the chances of us finding anything out there is so small, even if it hypothetically was still there, after all the wars that we've had over there, I don't think anything's left. So should that alarm us that we can't find that? No, not at all. Um, okay. Well, I already said that. Okay, so any questions about that before we – we're going to look at this again some more next week, and then we're going to start looking at the flood and that kind of stuff. But any questions so far? No? Okay, then we'll go ahead and stop there, and uh, we'll pick up we're right here uh, next week. We're done? Yes. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and play a game, uh, but we are going to uh, pray first if I can get this to pop up. <laughs>